Hey, Michael, we are recording. All right, thank you, Kirk. Okay, uh, welcome everybody to the Minority and Underrepresented Veteran Divisions webinar. Today is January 8th, 2021. So before we start, um, some housekeeping. You may have received a couple emails either last night or today, this morning, um, with some resources attached to them. The email uh, was just letting you know about the webinar. It gave you the meeting information and those resources that were attached were um, a PDF copy of the veteran resource book, um, a PDF copy of the link map, and then instructions on how to use the, um, the Zoom chat. And I believe there were some resources for, for the um, minority and underrepresented veterans division that were in there too. Um, if you did not receive that email, do not worry. We are going to post those links in the chat. Um, so if you didn't receive that veteran resource book, which um, you know, I would definitely recommend everybody have a copy, uh, you will have a chance to download that today. Um, we'll start off with a quick overview of the CalTAP program, followed by a, um, a quick segment uh, regarding our CalVet links and how they service veterans. Um, and then we'll go straight into the, uh, the main part of the webinar, which focuses on the MUVD uh, or MUV division. Um, after that, we'll have a questions and answers uh, uh, portion where uh, you'll have a chance to have all of the questions that you have for the presenters um, answered. Um, with that being said, um, please actually, yeah. So with that being said, um, if you do have questions, direct them to the CalTAP questions uh, um, uh, person, and we will use those to facilitate the questions and answers uh, portion at the end. Um, if we do find that you know a question needs immediate attention, uh, we will go ahead and send it over to the speakers. However, um, we're going to try holding most of them to the end so that way we can have a robust discussion. All right, so let's go ahead and get started. Um, my name is Michael Cisneros. I am a CalTAP training coordinator. I've been with uh, CalVet for a little over a year now, um, and I'm just going to go ahead and uh, talk to you real quick about the CalTAP program and how we help veterans in California. So what is CalTAP? Well, CalTAP is a transition assistance program that's designed to inform and connect veterans of all eras to their earned state and federal benefits, um, as well as provide continuous support and, assist, support and assistance as their needs change over time. And so what we've done is we've developed uh, pathways for veterans to help them navigate those benefits that are available to them. And those pathways are an entrepreneurship pathway, an employment pathway, an education pathway, and then there's also a general core curriculum of benefits that don't fit into those topics that I just mentioned. Um, if you, we do have a service provider pathway, our fifth pathway, we don't talk about that much, um, but if you do have anybody in your community or know anybody that wants to work with veterans, feel free to send them to our website to check out some of the programs that are available for those individuals. Um, Veteran-owned businesses are very popular uh, here, are very popular here in um, California. And um, if you're a service provider who wants to help veterans with those, those kind of things, feel free to check out our website. Um, the resource book was given to you uh, in your email. Uh, you can also find this on our website. Um, this is like gold for veterans. Everything that we discussed regarding uh, benefits for veterans in California can be found in this book. Um, and uh, anything that we discussed today on, on the webinar regarding those benefits, you can find more details in the book. Um, information about CalTAP can be found on our website. If you go to calvet.ca.gov, you can find the CalTAP banner in the middle of the screen. Um, when you click on that, you're taken to our pathways page. And before I go on to the pathways, I just wanted to bring your attention real quick to something that we've been doing since uh, this past March, actually. Um, once we went down into uh, quarantine, uh, we, started, we started offering these webinars to California veterans. Um, and we recorded them and we posted them on our website. So if you look down at the bottom of the page, there's the archive link. If you click on that, that will take you to the recorded webinars page. Um, here you can find uh, past recordings along with the PDFs of the webinar or of, of the PowerPoints. Um, and so we've done webinars on everything from mental health, um, students who are uh, transitioning into distance learning. We have a webinar for those 
those individuals, um, employment webinars, uh, financial literacy webinars, they're all there uh, and, and more to come to. All right, so how can I use CalTap online? Well, if you go to uh, caltap or calvet.ca.gov and you click on that CalTap banner, this is what our, path, our Pathways page looks like. For this example, we'll click on the Core Curriculum Pathway. When you click on any pathway, it takes you to a Modules page. In the Core Curriculum Modules, you'll find uh, information about the VA healthcare system, um, claims and compensation, and how to file the, that, that information. Um, there's a module on, on financial literacy down at the bottom. Um, but if you click on module number five, that will tell you all about your California benefits. Uh, it breaks it down um, in a PDF that looks like this. Uh, I'm sorry. Yeah, it breaks it down in a PDF that looks like this. Um, with this PDF, like I, like I mentioned earlier, um, you can find more information um, regarding those benefits in something like this. This PDF could tell you everything from, you know, who's, who's eligible, how to apply, where do you submit that paperwork, um, and little details like that. So what are those California benefits? Uh, well, this information can be found in your resource book. It's the first chapter on page 13, and also in that PDF that I just mentioned. But one of the main ones that we get a lot of questions on is the college tuition and fee waiver for our, uh, are disabled veteran dependents. Um, and so what that means is any, any disabled veteran who has a dependent that wants to, a child dependent that wants to attend any um, state school, so that's any UC, CSU, or California Community College, uh, they, have, they may have a chance to attend uh, uh, with their tuition covered. Um, and this saves a veteran over 35 million a year. So with this benefit, there are four different plans and we see most vet veterans fall into plan B. And this is because it requires a disability rating between zero and 100. <clears throat> and so if you have a disability rating between zero and 100 and you have a child that wants to attend any one of the state funded schools, um, as long as your child dependent falls underneath uh, the, the correct income level, um, then their tuition will be waived. Uh, if you do have a spouse that wants to take advantage of this benefit, there is a chance. You just have to figure out if you're eligible for any one of the other plans, plan A, plan C, or plan D. If you are eligible, then you do have the opportunity to split this benefit between your child dependent and your spouse or give it to either one. Uh, we've also partnered with the DMV to make it easier for individuals to identify as a veteran. And so now you can actually have the word veteran printed on your driver's license. So you don't have to carry around sensitive information in your pocket, like information that would be found on your DD form 214. Um, and it also just helps out. So you could uh, use that status to get those discounts around town. Um, honoring veterans license plate program. That's a program that's available to everybody in California. You don't necessarily have to be a veteran. Um, but this is just a program that uh, allows you to support our armed forces and um, all proceeds for this program do go to uh, veteran services here in California. So this is what helps fund your local county veteran service office. And then we have motor vehicle registration fee waivers. Uh, we don't talk about this too much, but uh, if you are a disabled veteran, severely disabled veteran, you may have a... Um, you may be eligible for this benefit. I would definitely recommend speaking with somebody at your uh, County Veteran Service Office first, and they could go over the eligibility requirements for that. Outdoor activities um, for veterans who wanna be outdoors. We have fishing and hunting license that's offered at a reduced annual cost. <clears throat> um, with this, you do have to be 50% disabled and uh, have an honorable discharge. Um, and then there's also the state park pass, state park pass, uh, is for uh, veterans to use at no cost. Um, with this, you do have to be 50% disabled, honorable, honorably discharged, and you do have to have, you should have, you have to have served within um, a wartime to be eligible for this one. Um, and then I believe actually as of Veterans Day of 2020, um, all veterans are able to, are uh, eligible to enter into federal parks um, at free of cost as long as you meet those requirements. Uh, tax programs, we don't talk about tax programs too much, but we do have them for disabled veterans and veterans who want to start their own business. Um, 
we don't talk about this too much just because it's different across California. And so if you are uh, interested in the different tax programs that we do have, um, I would recommend speaking with your local county tax assessor um, and they could go over eligibility requirements with you. Home loans, we do have a, a home loan program that's different than the federal VA home loan program. Uh, this program provides financing for veterans, uh, competitive market interest rates and low or no down payment requirements. Um, we have somebody who usually is on the, who usually comes onto these webinars with us and he talks about this program. His name is Brad uh, Pedersen. Um, we'll go ahead and put his contact information in the chat just in case any of you are interested or in the market for buying right now. Um, he loves speaking with veterans about the programs. He loves helping them find outside resources. Um, he's, he's a great, great, great uh, resource for yourself. So definitely take advantage of it if you are in the market. And for our women veterans, we have a program that provides information, advocacy, outreach, and support. Um, this program is partnered with the California Women Veterans Leadership Council, which just helps, uh, helps our women veterans get more opportunity in their community. And they do have a roster that you can sign up on to find out more about what's going on with the program and some of their outreach opportunities coming up. Um, but if you go to their webpage, you can find out more information about that program there. Um, same thing with our minority veterans who um, they will actually be speaking with the, uh, speaking today, um, but we have a program that provides information, advocacy, outreach and support. They also help with naturalization services and citizenship um, processes. And you can find more information uh, on their web page also. They do have a roster, I believe, which they'll talk about, um, but information about that program can be found on our website. All right, so homes for long-term care, we don't, um, you may not be thinking about this right now, uh, but if you have anybody in your community or a family member that is a veteran that is looking for something like this, there are eight different homes in California, all the way from Chula Vista down south to Redding up north. Uh, these homes provide long-term care for veterans. They offer medical, dental, rehabilitation, and social activities um, for these uh, individuals who live there. <clears throat> And state services, again, maybe something you're not thinking about right now, um, but if you have anybody or a family member that needs something like this, uh, there are three in California, one in Seaside, which is right outside of Monterey. There's another state cemetery um, in Redding, and then also one in Yonville. And Yonville is right outside of Napa. However, for that, um, you do have to be a resident of the Yonville Veterans Home to be buried there. Um, so if that's not the case, you do have the other two to choose from. And I believe they are in the process of um, creating a fourth one somewhere in Southern California. I don't know if they, I don't know how far they are in that process, um, but I do know that it will be built in Southern California. All right, and before I go, I just want to bring your attention to some common um, websites that you should be familiar with as a veteran here in California. Uh, the first one is the va.gov website. Um, I think of this website as kind of like a hub for veterans. Uh, so if you're interested in, in disability compensation or you're looking for information about the VA healthcare system, need information about your records, or you want to take advantage of education benefits, go to this website and they will direct you to, to, the, to where you need to go to get those processes started. And then there's eBenefits. Uh, eBenefits is where you would go um, if you are taking advantage of those, um, those uh, benefits. Particularly for me, I know um, in uh, in my in my case, I was on this website constantly when I was in school. Um, this website would let me know if they've certified the classes that I was taking. This website would let me know if they've paid my tuition or if they've sent out um, the the BAH that I get every semester or every uh, every month. Um, so this is this is where you go to figure out what's going on with the money, <laughs> and you can also apply on this website too. Um, and then for those of you who are going to take advantage of the VA healthcare system, Healthy Vet is a good one. Um, Healthy Vet, you could, uh, my Healthy Vet, you could actually go on and, and speak with your primary care physician, um, create appointments with them. You could check out your healthcare records um, and also um, uh, manage your prescriptions. Okay, so that's just a quick overview of the CalTAP program. There's a ton of benefits out there for you. Like I said, check out that resource book. Um, I believe uh, Kirk put a link in the chat for that book. And like I said, you could also go to our website to download your own copy. Um, but that's going to have more information regarding 
what's available to you and more information regarding what I just um, talked about uh, for the overview. So with that being said, I'll go ahead and pass it on to Lance. Lance is our local interagency network coordinator, and he's going to explain how they help out veterans here in California. So go ahead, Lance. Right on. Hey, thanks everybody uh, for joining today and, and coming on the webinar. Uh, my portion's just real quick. It's really just to let you know uh, what a local interagency network coordinator is, or we call ourselves LINCS. Um, so a little bit about me, I was wounded in Iraq in 2007 um, with the 82nd Airborne Division, spent about 10 months recovering in the hospital and was medically retired. Um, so I've kind of gone through the transition, um, was wounded about 13 years ago, uh, you know, went through the VA process and all that kind of stuff and have kind of, um, you know, learned by trial and error how to navigate, you know, the confusing veteran world. Um, and a lot of the links, most of them are, are veterans as well. If you go to the next slide, you'll see a map of California that breaks the link regions into eight different regions or the FEMA disaster relief regions of California. And so no matter where you reside in California, you will have a designated link and you can use or contact any one of us. Um, but the thing that's going to be different is each of us really get to know our local regions and really get to understand the, um, the players involved, um, you know, at the local level. So all of us kind of have a, you know, good understanding of the federal um, and the state level benefits, but something that we specialize in is our local benefits. So in San Diego, where I'm located, um, we have over 250 different um, veteran service organizations just in San Diego alone. Um, you know, and so getting to know all those and, you know, building a network is kind of what we do. So, um, you know, when you reach out to us, it could be a question about federal benefits and we might have a contact that we can get you to, or it might be a state benefits, or, you know, it might be something that's one of the local veteran service providers can help you out with. Um, you can see the regions aren't very um, even as far as uh, geography goes. Um, myself and Ben Gales have pretty small geographical areas, but large populations of veterans in those areas. And Cole up in the north has one of the biggest regions, but you know he's dealing with a lot more of the rural um, areas up there. And so all of our jobs tend to be a little bit different depending on the areas we are and how established and set up those areas are to assist and aid veterans. Next slide. So some of the things we do, um, you know, on an everyday basis before the pandemic, we really were the outreach arm of CalVet. So we were going to all of the local events and, um, you know, veterans uh, organization meetings and all kinds of things, um, going to the universities, going to the veteran centers, um, everywhere we could think to basically provide that state outreach um, and really be the, the, um, the outreach arm of CalVet. And um, we, since the, since the um, pandemic, we've really transitioned um, into really accepting all the phone calls that come through CalVet um, they're directed to us eight um, links right now. And so what's been beneficial about that is we have, you know, the extensive lists and contacts in our regions. We've been able to help answer and assist those veterans that call in. Um, but we still do provide outreach like on these, you know, virtual based platforms doing uh, the CalTAPs and and other different, um, you know, meetings in our region. But um, our job has shifted a little bit since the lockdown in March. Um, but we still are making tons and tons of referrals and, and like I said, working directly with those service providers and our networks. We also assist with local emergencies. So anytime there, you know, are the fires like we've seen in Los Angeles and up north last few years um, and all over the state, really, um, they'll set up these local assistance centers. And we go out there and we man those those local assistance centers and we provide veterans with with um, you know answers and to their questions and assist them in any way we can. A lot of the um, veterans who've lost their homes that had CalVet loans, one of the benefits of that is that 
there's a $250 total rebuild for the insurance that comes with the CalVet loan. And so that's a huge thing that's, you know, beneficial if disaster does strike. Um, and then we also provide leadership and advocacy in our local regions. So whether that's like board of supervisors or, um, you know, different um, coalitions and collaboratives, we are definitely there to assist and aid and, and help push policy that that's um, going to help our veterans. Next slide. Um, and again, this is just kind of recapping, you know, connecting you to your benefits. So it could be really anything state level, federal level or local, you know, we've got our networks built and set up and we'll be able, if we don't know the answer to your questions, um, um, we usually have someone who, who knows the answer and we can direct you um, to that person. Next slide. So that's my contact information. If you're in the San Diego region, um, that's my my uh, direct cell, work cell, and email there. Um, and uh, if you go back to the map, you can find your your link and um, copy down their email addresses. And I'm sure they're on um, the information that's going to be dispersed to you either before or after this meeting. So that's all I've got today. Basically, the main message is, you know, no matter what, um, Never feel uh, bad for reaching out to any of us links. We're here to help you and uh, hope you have a wonderful day. All right, thanks Lance, appreciate that. Um, now we're gonna go ahead and pass it on to Rakesh or Ricky. Uh, Ricky is from the Minority and Underrepresented Veterans Division. He's also here with Sochi. Um, Sochi is the, uh, the, 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 the deputy um director if i'm not mistaken <laughs> please uh correct me on that title um and they're going to talk about their um program and how they help veterans here in california thank you michael uh my name is ricky powell um i'm a program analyst for the minorities and underrepresented veterans division uh, i started on, on with calvet about six months ago a uh, little bit about myself. I'm a Iraq war vet, uh, served in the United States Army for five years. And uh, now I'm here and I'm just honored to be here and present on, on behalf of the Minorities and Underrepresented Veterans Division. Uh, next slide, please. So we're gonna go right into our mission statement. Um, the Minorities and Underrepresented Veterans mission is to ensure that all veterans have equal access to their earned benefits, regardless of race, ethnic origin, religion, gender, gender identity, or sexual orientation. Promote usage of state and federal veterans benefits, programs and services. Advocate on behalf of the minority and underrepresented veterans by identifying gaps and services or barriers to access. Next slide, please. So we're gonna go and talk about the different programs our division has to offer. The first is the CalVet Pathway to Citizenship Program. Then the Tribal Veterans Outreach Program, CalVet LGBTQ Inclusion Program, and our newest initiative is the MUVD roster. And I'll go in, in detail in the next slides uh, for each program. Next slide, please. <clears throat> so our first program is gonna be the CalVet Pathway to Citizenship Program. In 2018, CalVet's Minority and Underrepresented Veterans Division launched the Pathway to Citizenship Program in partnership with the Governor's Office, the California Department of Social Services and Community Immigration Services. Veterans and their families have received assistance with nationalization services since its enactment. The goal of such workshops is to provide free legal assistance to veterans seeking citizenship and or naturalization services. Veterans can um, receive expedited naturalization services through these programs. Currently, there's over 100 service organizations uh, approved by the California Department of Social Services. Um, 
and that provide free legal assistance to our veterans throughout California. Uh, last year, our division uh, conducted three uh, CalVet pathway decisionship programs, and we assisted over 150 people. Um, so it's a great program, it's free services. Um, and we'll move on to our very, our next program. The next program I'll talk about is the LGBTQ Veteran Inclusion Program. So CalVet believes in building support for LGBTQ veterans and their families that promotes resilience in the face of the challenges. By bringing the gap between LGBTQ veterans and the community, our program provides a platform of communication, resilience, unity, and support. As the minority and underrepresented veterans division, our role is to assist to, and connect veteran resources to help empower the LGBTQ veteran community. Discharge upgrade assistance. So prior to um, the Don't Ask, Don't Tell Repeal Act, uh, service members, some service members uh, received other than honorable discharges due to their um, sexual orientation. So it's all our goal to work with uh, community partners to provide discharge upgrade assistance to those veterans. In addition, um, we provide educational webinars and workshops. And those uh, workshops include, um, last year we uh, celebrated the ninth anniversary of the Don't Ask, Don't Tell, Tell Repeal Act. Um, we had members from the community, members from the LGBTQ community, um, elected officials, uh, service providers, all provide resources on uh, LG, LGBTQ veterans um, to our uh, California community. We'll go to the next slide, please. <clears throat> next program we'll talk about is the Tribal Veteran Advocate uh, Training Program. Currently, we have 109 federally recognized tribes in California. Our goal for 2021 will include an outreach program for Native American veterans across California. We work, uh, our division works closely with Cal OES to provide natural disaster assistance. Last year, we assisted, uh, well, we reached out to 59 tribes in California, and we assisted um, in providing uh, over 10,000 PPE equipment uh, working with Cal OES to our uh, local tribes. And our goal for 2021 is to work closely with the United States Department of Veterans Affairs in providing direct services to our Native American veterans. So one of the programs that we wanna highlight is the Native American Direct Loan Program. This program uh, provides a loan for Native American veterans to buy, build, or improve a home on federal trust land. Last year, we conducted our first Native American veterans uh, celebration. Uh, this was in collaboration with the Native American Veterans Association uh, stationed from LA. Um, this uh, event kind of gave us more ideas on how we can honor our Native American veterans. In addition, we provided uh, much needed resources to our local Native American veterans. So next slide, please. And our very last program that our division has to offer is the minority and underrepresented veterans roster. As part of our roster, you will receive updated information about benefits, programs, services, and resources throughout California. You will obtain information on upcoming events. Um, your information will remain confidential. Um, and our goal is to bring visitors to our CalVet website where you can learn about additional resources CalVet has to offer. Next slide, please. So some of the other events our division did last year was the suicide prevention informational webinar. Um, and this webinar was really geared towards um, some of the stressors that the COVID-19 pandemic has brought on to our veteran population. And some of these stressors have um, led um, veterans to um, 
anxiety and stress that um, could lead to suicidal thoughts. So we worked with our local vet centers and the Cal, uh, VA healthcare system to provide information on suicide prevention. And in November of last year, um, we did a Seek American Awareness and Appreciation webinar. So this was our first uh, uh, Seek American Veteran webinar. And this webinar uh, really focused on um, the milestones of having religious accommodations in military uh, for military members. Our keynote speaker was Lieutenant Colonel Kasi, um, and he actually helped spearhead legislation uh, for religious accommodations in the U.S. military. And then our very last webinar we did last year was uh, Operation Stress Management. Uh, again, another webinar that was really geared towards um, the COVID pandemic and how to understand um, challenges and unknowns during a pandemic. And we uh, collaborated with the American Red Cross who actually read, uh, led a stress management exercise. Um, and all the webinars that we've done uh, in the past year is on our website. And, um, and there's recordings and transcripts of the webinars. And I encourage you to come visit our website to get uh, additional information. I do wanna close off by talking about um, our upcoming events. So we do have a veterans roundtable event coming up, but it's not open to the public, but I wanna highlight that is because we are trying to um, partner up and build a rapport with the different ethnic groups um, and make sure that our, our division is providing the proper, proper care to our uh, minority veterans. And lastly, um, we have Black History Month coming up and our division is looking for um, people who to interview um, so we can do a, a article, a press release um, on African-Americans in the military. So I thank you for your time. And I think uh, we're gonna go into questions and answers. This is my contact information. Uh, please feel free to give me a call, email me. Uh, we'll be happy to assist you any way possible. All right, thanks Ricky. Uh, lots of good stuff and looking forward to seeing what's gonna come out of this department within the next year. And uh, we're gonna move on to the questions and answers portion now, but before we move on, I just wanted to apologize to Sochi. Her title is Deputy Secretary of Minority Veterans Affairs. And so I apologize for butchering that. Uh, but she is actually here with Ricky to help out with the questions and answers. Um, and so her contact information is there uh, also. Um, and so with that being said, let's go ahead and um, pass it on to Kirk. Kirk is going to help us out with the questions and answers. Um, and. Uh, after we, if we've gone through all the questions that we have recorded, then we could open it up to those who would wish to um, use their mic to ask the question. So uh, let's see what happens first. Go ahead, uh, Kirk. Good, thank you, Michael. Uh, we do have three questions um, briefly. Um, there is, the first one is regarding uh, education. And this would be from uh, Keish. And it's in order to go to school, do I, Oops, I'm sorry. I'm having a hard time reading this because <laughs> stand by here. Let me get this on one page. Um, do I necessarily have to go through voc rehab? I have some challenges with accessing my counselor. No, uh, I don't think you necessarily have to go through your unless unless you have a voc rehab counselor. I would definitely continue working with them. Um, as you're trying to get into school, but uh, you know the resources that your education benefits are separate than what you're what you're given from Voc Rehab. Voc Rehab is actually an, an employment program, but you are given education benefits, extra education benefits depending on the need. So um, you know I would definitely continue continue working with your Voc Rehab counselor because they could help you out with um, finding those accommodations in school or helping you out with building a schedule maybe. Uh, but yeah, you could definitely get education benefits without having to go through your voc rehab counselor. Okay, thank you. Um, hopefully that answers your question, Keish. Uh, the next one's to from Keith. Um, and he asks, I need help with employment. I have a master's in social work and a master in legal studies. 
Then that in that case, I would probably recommend if you need help with employment, I would definitely recommend reaching out to work for warriors. They are um, they're actually a organization that we work alongside with a lot on these webinars. They help us out a lot, um, but they're almost like headhunters for veterans. Uh, they have a special relationship with the employers in their areas um, and they help they help the veteran find a job. And what they do is they basically hold your hand throughout the whole process. And so if you're looking for something, they'll help you out with the, with the application. They'll help you out with the resume. They'll help you out with um, interview techniques. Uh, and they do all this, all these. And then after you have your, uh, your interview, if you do not get the job, they will actually go back and speak with the employer to find out what went wrong and how you could do better next time. So if you're having issues with finding employment, I would definitely recommend reaching out to them. We could put their contact information in the chat, um, uh, but definitely see what they could do for you. Okay, the next one is from Marvin. Uh, I'm looking for networking help and customer acquisition and team building. Um, that, uh, let's see, I don't know. That might be something maybe you could speak with your link about with the networking part at least i know that's what they're that's pretty much what they do is network um so maybe you could uh reach out to you whoever your link is and see um what they do or how they could help um especially if you're trying to work with specifically veteran uh companies or organizations okay the next question is from Kimberly, uh, who was invited to the round table? Ricky, I think that's sure. either you or Soshi. Yep. So uh, this is our first round table that we're gonna have uh, this year. And currently we have the Japanese American Veterans Association, the American GI Forum, the Native American Veterans Association and the Jewish War Veterans of USA confirmed um, I'm still waiting on a few more organizations to uh, confirm. And this is, like I mentioned before, this is not open to the public, but our goal is to learn more about these organizations so we can uh, partner up with them in the future to provide resources to um, our veteran community in the future. Okay. Good morning. Thank you. Uh, thank you. If I may, Kirk, this is Sochi Rodriguez Murillo, Deputy Secretary of Minority Vets. Thank you so much, Ricky. Um, as as Ricky mentioned, uh, our roundtable is for us to get connected and know what resources we can provide and how to better serve our veterans. If you're interested in, in, in helping us bring together a future roundtable with um, other partners, feel, feel free to reach out to us. We want to hear from you and we want to make sure that we explore that opportunity. And we're going to use this space to bring more resources and future webinars on, on different subjects. Uh, to veterans. Thank you. Thank you, Sochi. Okay, so the next question is from Carlos. Uh, does the Pathway to Citizenship Program help only veterans or can they help veterans' parents with naturalization services? Yes, so it, it's, it's uh, assistance for the veteran and for the veteran's family. Um, so feel free to reach out. We do both. We work with uh, the different service providers provided by, uh, we have a list provided by the Department of Social Services, and we'll connect you with a, a service provider that's near and close to your area. And of course, your family um, is also part of the free assistance that, uh, that they give. Thank you, Sochi. Okay, the next question is from, uh, let's see, Darlene is, we're interested in seeing how we can help with the Black History Month program. Um, I believe Sochi, if you wanna, or Ricky, if you wanna address them in the chat, I can direct them directly towards you and they can uh, get some information how to contact you directly. And uh, also their contact information is available and they can reach out to your division specifically for that information, if that's okay. Yes, of course, thank you, Kirk. So. 
Uh, take down our emails. Please email us. We're looking at, at, at various forms, as Ricky mentioned, uh, a press release, a newsletter. Um, we also have the option of creating short videos. We want to hear your story, share your story with other veterans um, to, you know, to, have, to show, show your experience and, and, and show folks out there who have also a story to share in, in the future to, to come to us. So email us and then we'll get in touch um, to help highlight your story uh, for next month. Thank you. And the next one is from, um, let's see, the next one is from, I believe, I apologize, I'm scrolling through the chat to look at the <laughs> questions here. So um, from Kimberly uh, asked about Work for Warriors. Um, Cap Michael had uh, mentioned Work for Warriors. I'll be putting their information in the chat. Um, I just need a moment to go back and access that resource for the Work for Warriors. And other than that, I think the only other ones are from uh, some information about the program from the general, Melwood General runs the program for the uh, Black History Month program. And then that was from Darlene. And then the Voc Rehab from Sheralis about how Voc Rehab can uh, connect you with social and work-related positions. So um, we didn't have anything specific to the um, minority veterans other than some of the other questions that were citizenship from Carlos and entrepreneurship. So I think that's all the questions, Michael. Um, if you give me a moment, I will be able to post that information in the chat. Um, all right. All right. Kirk, while you, uh, while you go and do that, um, I see that Kurt has his hand raised. And so I'm going to open up his mic so that he could ask his question. Um, and let's see. Okay, let me grab the resources. Hello, hello. Hey, Kurt, how you doing? Hey, doing pretty good. Hey, I'm going to be moving from uh, San Jose, California to North, uh, Southern California or uh, Arizona because I need warm weather because of my arthritis and stuff. Okay. Is there anything I need to do to transfer all my stuff from Palo Alto to wherever I'm going? And I just don't, you know, the, can I help or at all? Or I yeah, really so there should be, if you're, if you're staying in California, there shouldn't be anything that you have to do. Um, but if you are going, if you're, if you are traveling out of the state or moving out of the state, that might be different. I would definitely recommend if you have a CVSO that you're working with right now in your in your area right now, um, okay. I would I would ask them to, uh, what that process is like because it's going to be the same no matter where you go in California. But it's when you it's when you get out of California where you know they might have issues with getting into records or something, um, or you may have okay. to do something more official with with switching your records. Over. That's what I was trying to figure out. Okay. Yeah, and so I would definitely if you are working with a CVSO right now in in San Jose. I would just contact them and see what they would say. Okay, sounds good. Yeah. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Perfect. All right. And then uh, Guerrero has his hand raised, so I'll go ahead and open up his mic. Hello. Thank you. Uh, my question is regarding for minority veterans. Is there um, some kind of help that links you with the uh, Small Business Veterans uh, Organization to help um, start or support a uh, minority uh, veteran business? Sure, um, we have a direct contact uh, with uh, the DVBE um, person that is from Veteran Services. So I'll get your uh, contact information directly from the chat room and we'll contact you with that information. Okay, um, we do have a question from Gerard. Um, this was, how do I go about hiring a vet for my office? I don't, I'm not sure if that was just the last question as well um, regarding that information. Let me see if Gerard. Bring a vet. Um, that wouldn't, I mean, maybe that might be a service provider part. Um, and, and, you know, in that section of our website, um, I'm not, we're not really too familiar with that, with that part though, which I, I know that they can um, coordinate with work for warriors uh, as a service provider and service provider work for warriors um, does establish a link between the veteran and 
uh, employers. So they can become an employer uh, registered through Work for Warriors uh, to have to hire people directly for, through their website. Right. That's what I was going to say that next. Yeah, uh, definitely. Work for Warriors would probably be the next best bet um, if you don't find anything on a website under the service provider. Um, definitely, definitely go to Work for Warriors. Okay. Um, we do have a question from Ibarra. Uh, for the disabled veteran California fee waiver students, dependents are able to qualify for postgraduate school. Are the income amounts for the parent, vet, or for the student? The income is for the student. And, and so this benefit can be used for whichever degree you're going for, as long as the student, the child dependents income level is below the, I, I believe it's a federal poverty line, which is like 13,000 a year or some, somewhere around that number. So, you know, you have to imagine if you do have, you know, a bachelor's already or a master's um, and you're trying to get a PhD, you may have already, you may have a job that's already, you know, put you over that line. So it is possible, but you just have to understand that the child, they're looking at the child dependence income level and they're making sure that that's not over that certain amount of income level. Okay, thank you. Um, the next one is from Marvin. Um, and Marvin asks, I would like to share business opportunities with veterans who are looking for additional ways to make income as well as provide services to veteran homeowners. So I think that was in reference to the previous question, uh, maybe as with Gerard had. Yeah, I would probably just check out the service provider uh, section on our website. Okay, um, the, James has a question on, uh, he would like information for the minority veteran small business also. Um, is Ricky, is it possible to have a link for that? I can post in the chat or you're, you can post in the chat for them? Uh, I'll post it right now. Thank you. And then Kimberly has provided a link for the Melwood Center and I wanna copy that link and provide it for everyone. And then Darlene is asking, are there any benefits to forgive student loans for dependents? Not for dependents. I know that there is for veterans, uh, veterans who are disabled, um, but a loan forgiveness program for veterans dependents, I, I'm not aware of at all. Okay, I'm not either. Um, they can check with uh, OSAR, the Office of Student Assistance and Relief. They may have some further information or maybe resources. And uh, I, will, I can put their uh, link in there as well, the Office of Student Assistance and Relief. But I'll, I'll post, pull up their website real quick if I can post that in there. I also posted the survey in there as well, Michael, if you want to elaborate on that a little bit. Uh, yeah, perfect. Uh, yeah, so the survey is sent out to uh, our viewers. Um, basically, you know, we're just trying to figure out how we can make these uh, events better um, and more relevant. And so if you have the time, feel free to fill it out and send it back to us. Let us know what went well, what we could work on. Um, and we'll definitely try to um, continue doing our best. <laughs> uh, so while you work on that, uh, Kurt, I'm going to go ahead and open up uh, David's uh, mic because he has his hand raised. And then I'll go to Mondo after. Sorry, Mondo. Hello. Hey, David, how you doing? I'm doing well, thanks. Thanks for putting this event on, guys. So of course. My question is regards to employment. I had a job opportunity uh, on the federal side through usajobs.gov. Uh, Went through the interview process. I used the resources to help with the resumes and for salary negotiation. But when it came down to the security clearance, uh, there was an issue uh, with uh, how I responded to one of the questions regarding PTS. And I feel that how I responded to that question uh, impacted my ability to obtain uh, or reobtain my security clearance, which I've had a clearance for uh, the 21 years while I was in, uh, it had lapsed because it was greater than two years uh, since my retirement. I am 100% disabled vet. Um, so I, I don't know where to go to to even dig into that. 
because uh, most of the, my, my skill set is around ordinance and I don't really feel or have uh, much motivation or desire to do much else uh, or to acquire the skill sets to do anything else. I don't know uh, where I'm at with that right now. Yeah. Well, you know, I guess you would want to ask yourself, are you, are you trying to do exactly what you were doing on the federal side or do you want to, you know, kind of do what you were doing on, on, on the civilian side? Cause if that's the case, you know, cause if that's the case, you want to stay with the federal, you would probably have to deal with, you know, um, appealing something. And I would probably recommend going to the CVSO for that just because they have more, um, insight into what's going on with, 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 with your file, you know, per se. Yeah, but if you want to just kind of take your skills that you have and find them out in the, in the civilian world, you know, a job that is, that's representative of what you've done in the past, I would, I would probably definitely go to work for warriors. Um, and cause these are the ones that will help you out with, you know, what went wrong during that process and, and what can you do to make it better or, you know, how can we fix this? Um, and, and not, not go through it again. So, you know, I guess it just depends on, on which direction you do want to go to, um, and, and, and how you, how you get there, I guess. Right. Yeah, definitely. I've, it, I've kind of sat on this for, uh, for about a month or two trying to uh, figure out what's the best approach, you know, whether I file a EEO complaint, uh, regarding, the security clearance, but then who does that fall on? You know, right? Yeah, you, you know how that can go. You're yeah, totally. Yelling into a void is what it seems like. Mm -hmm. I understand that. Yeah. So you know, and then, so if you if you know that, then maybe maybe give Work for Warriors a try and see and see how they could help. You know, and and maybe they might have some answers for you when it comes to uh, what happened with that federal job. You know, yeah. um, but I would mm -hmm. definitely reach out to them too. All right. I appreciate it. Thank you. Yeah, no problem, Dave. All right. I'm going to go ahead and open it up to Mondo. Mondo's been waiting. Uh, and go ahead when you're ready. Okay. I'm 100% disabled. Uh, the social worker that I had in group passed away. And my problem right now is uh, remodeling my bathroom. I know there's a program. Uh, federal and I was thinking going that route or also thinking of all that so I'm right now in like in I'm in limbo right now mm -hmm. <clears throat> any guidance on that or should I go uh, to a service rep regarding this or what do I yeah, do well I definitely that's if you were to give us a call on the phone that would probably be the first thing that we tell you to do is go to CVSO um, there are programs out there for our disabled veterans to help them remodel their houses, uh, remodel certain rooms to make it more suitable for your, your disability. Um, so yeah, that, that, that was going to be the first thing I say is definitely talk with your CBSO and they can help you find the right program for you and see if you're eligible for it and get you started with the paperwork. Okay. Yeah. And if you need help finding your CBSO, um, you know, you could always email me um, after or just give that, there's a 1-800 number that I'll put up on the very last slide. You can always give them a call too. Um, and they can help you with finding your local county veteran service office. Okay. Put it All in right. the chat as well, Michael. Uh, it's Thank in you. the chat too. Yeah. All right. So I'm gonna go ahead and uh, open it up now to Darlene. Darlene, when you're ready, go ahead and uh, ask your question. Yes. Um Thank you. I posted it in, in the um, chat as well, but I thought maybe I'll just ask it. I'm, my husband is a Vietnam vet. Um, Branch was Navy and thanks to the Blue Waters Act um, is now able to put in claims for exposure to Agent Orange. We did all the requirement. He is terminal. Uh, and I had to take him out three or four times to different doctors as the requirement. Uh, as part of the requirements and jeopardize him, uh, but we did our part. But now I can't seem to get any answers um, from anyone, and it's really disheartening. And I, like I said, he is terminal, and I think he is waiting to hear that it, his death was not in vain, and that his, you know, the military is recognizing his service. 
yeah. to this country and the sacrifices. And I just wanted to see if there's anything that you all can do to assist us. Yeah, you know, uh, unfortunately, and I, and I say unfortunately just because, um, you know, with this, with CalTAP and CalVet, we're more of a, like information, informational um, entity kind of thing. Uh, and so the only thing that I could tell you to do, recommend you doing actually is, is finding your local county veterans service office. These are the ones, these are the people that actually are supposed to be working with the veterans in their area, um, in their county and helping them out with paperwork that's submitted to the VA. Um, they hold, they usually are the ones that are holding the veterans hand. And, um, you know, I, I, I would hope actually, you know what, Anthony is on, on right now. Let me open it up to him. Cause I think he might have something. Anthony is uh, one of our links also. Um, and so he might actually have something to say about this. Go ahead, Anthony. Yeah. Yeah. So, um, uh, for assistance, you could, there's a patient advocate at every, uh, VA medical center. So if you go to your respective medical center and uh, look it up under va.gov, you should be able to find someone there to help you. Also, there's three regional offices. Uh, there's one in the Bay Area, Oakland, one in Los Angeles, and one in San Diego. And the regional office, I would direct my questions to the director or the acting director to your case regarding getting assistance. And then finally, I agree with what was shared about going to the local county veteran service office. The uh, officer there does work very closely with the Calvet regional office and they're able to uh, look up and get information, you know, on an occasional basis on, on certain cases. So I think if you go those three ways, you should be able to get help um, for, you know, in terms of what's going on with your in your particular case. The other thing is because of COVID, everything's really slowed down. I know that's an overused excuse, but it's a reality because everybody's working from home. Um, so I hope that helps. Yeah, thanks, Anthony. Appreciate that. And so everybody, uh, Anthony is our uh, Los Angeles County link, and so he's he works with uh, all the veterans down in LA County. Lots of veterans down there. So very very knowledgeable about this stuff too. One other thing, I just want to address the previous question. Somebody asked about a modification to a bathroom. The VA has a program called HISA H I S A. So if you go under VA.gov under the search box, type in H I S A you will find a program uh, and guidelines to modification uh, of your bathroom. It'll include a ramp and bathroom modifications and so on. And there's also another program called H, uh, called SAH, Sierra Alpha Hotel, and also Sierra Hotel Alpha, specialty adapted housing and special home adaptation. Those three areas should be helpful uh, to help in, in terms of modification of your home. There's others, but those are the ones that I'm aware of. Oh, okay. All right. Thanks, Anthony. Appreciate your help. Hey, Michael. I want to add um, to Darlene's question. Um, if if your terminal, if your husband's terminal, uh, the VA can expedite the claim. Um, so there's there's two exceptions. Uh, one, if is there a homeless vet who's filing a claim, or a vet that is terminal, um, the VA will expedite the claim. So the first step would be to speak with the uh, claims representative to file that. Um, blue water claim yeah so that would be the county veteran service office definitely yep yeah thanks ricky yep. all right uh i think christopher was was waiting and then i'll open it up to kurt after so let's go ahead christopher when you're ready go ahead okay can you hear me yes you can okay great i'm working off my phone so this is kind of lame hey um i i just wanted to make i'm, I'm a retired marine um I run a nonprofit called NPower California. It's a non, my, my headquarters is in uh, New York. My boss is in New York. I'm three time zones away, which is just the way I like it. But um, we have some two major issues right now in the country. One is you know, you know, COVID caused unemployment and the economic crisis. And the other is the, the social injustice things that are going on. And I run a program where I train people in technology. It's 16 weeks, half a day. And then I, I place them into jobs. So I, I help with resume, LinkedIn, the tech training, and professional development training. Half the class is veterans, and half the class is young adults from underserved communities. And it's a really great thing when you bring veterans, like, you know, 
And when I left the Marine Corps, I, I did the floating around. <laughs> like, you know, what, what do I do? I used to be somebody. Um, you get in the classroom and you're mentoring young people and they're your lab partners. And then you're going out to your job interviews together 16 weeks later. And so we, we train people up and, and place them into jobs. It's a completely free program. And we get our money from places like Citibank that hire our people. We, we, um, we put people out on internships so they get some experience. But um, half of my staff are veterans. Uh, we train in ITF fundamentals. You get two CompTIA certificates. And then I send the resume and I vouch for these students, for these veterans. Uh, I got one of my veterans, Terry Martin, is working at Google right now. I've got uh, veterans at Deloitte, San Francisco Airport, uh, doing IT jobs. And so they, they go from, in some cases, making minimum wage or being jobless to making around 50K a year on average. And I just wanted to share that I'm happy to put my info in the chat, but it's NPower California. It's uh, November and the word power.org. And it's, uh, you know, for people who are interested in tech that you know how to use an iPhone, you work to Singar's radio, you use GPS, you know, overseas, you can get ITF basic CompTIA certified and you can move into an entry level tech job. And then that's the beginning you go from there. I just want to share that because, um, you know, the, the, the job crisis is impacting veterans in a big way. Yeah. So that, that's all I have to say with that. And I'm, I'm happy to uh, put something in the chat or whatever else you'd like me to do. That's all I have to say. Thank well, you. Thanks. Yeah, no, thank you, Christopher. Um, I think it's important. I think it's important for veterans to know that there are other resources out there besides the resources that are given to you from, you know, the VA. Um, there, there are outside resources waiting to give money to veterans and or help veterans you know, um, and so it's, I think that that was an important plug and thank you, Christopher, for, for doing that. Um, Christopher wants to, Christopher, if you want to send me your information in the chat and then I will go ahead and put that link in for everybody, if you can. All right. And then finally, um, let's see, we might, we have time for maybe one or two more questions. So I'm going to open it up to Kurt. Kurt's been waiting for a while. Um, so Kurt, go ahead when you're ready. Mm -hmm. So we do have a question from, let me back up here a little bit, Darlene and then Christopher. Um, we had one from Brian, I believe. Hey, Kurt. We, yes. Hold on. Uh, I, let me, let's, let's hear from Kurt first. Hey, <laughs> yeah, Kurt, how do you check, do you check your you disability? One, <laughs> I'm sorry. Go ahead. Go ahead. Go ahead, Kurt. Go ahead. How do you check oh, your disability? I'm 100% disabled, but I'm not sure what it is. And I think it's different than what my actual VA records say. Yeah, you could if you if you're if you are um, if you, if you're good with working a computer and you want to get yeah. online, you could definitely check that stuff out on um, VA.gov or okay. uh, the eBenefits. Okay, um, that information is all up there now. However, I'm not going to lie; their website isn't isn't all that user friendly. You know, so if for somebody who's who doesn't know how to get the, get around, um, I would definitely recommend talking with a CVSO. Your CVSO will be able to uh, let you know that information also. But if you want to okay. do it yourself, just go to those websites that we mentioned in the beginning, uh, okay. eBenefits or VA.gov. All right, thanks. Yeah. And sorry, Kirk. Kirk, now go ahead with the with the questions that you do have. Kirk or Kurt? Kirk, go ahead. Kirk. Kirk. Okay. Yeah. I'm sorry. <laughs> it's Roger Kirk. up. Kirk. And <laughs> Byron uh, or Glenn had a question about the COVID uh, and CalVet, and he wanted to know if CalVet helps facilitate COVID nineteen immunizations. Uh, I don't. I haven't heard anything about that uh, as of right now. I mean, that could be a possibility in the future. Um, I think right now we're all still waiting on what's going to happen next after the first round go out. So. Um, I can't say anything on that right, right this second. Um, Why? Yeah, I don't know of anything that's going to be out to the immediate public. Um, I know that they will be doing immunizations in the veteran home specifically, but um, I don't know about the, the general public. Um, the yeah, next question yeah. we had was, I'm sorry. I was going to say maybe just like one, maybe one or two more questions just because we're, we're kind of going over time now, uh, but. Okay. We have an education question from Zeke Garcia uh, about his son. He's a 90% disabled veteran um, and he's unable to work. 
does, he asks if he has to be 100% for his son to get financial assistance. Uh, no. Uh, with, well, uh, hmm. That's a good question. I, I don't, I don't think that with your education benefits, if you are doing federal education benefits, unless you've already um, transferred those benefits to your, your, your dependent while you were serving, then um, the only kind of financial benefit that the dependent will get for school is the tuition and fee waiver. And that's through CalVet. Um, other than that, they're, they're, they wouldn't be eligible for the BAH um, unless, uh, Kirk, do, unless, do you know of any other program? Um, not for, unless he has his GI Bill assistant or converted over to his dependent, um, that would be the only other benefit that would be available to the dependent. Right. So, and if that's not the case, then the only um education benefit that that it would be available for the dependent through CalVet is the fee waiver and that just covers tuition and fees it doesn't it doesn't give a a, a monthly stipend it doesn't cover books and and supplies it just covers tuition and fees that's correct uh, i did put the uh, 800 number for the gi bill in the chat so um there is that as well um you can also reach our our website under the caltap website if you have information on the the fee waiver um i did post the um application for the veteran the vet, the dependent fee waiver in the chat and i can upload it one more time just for general purposes all right, so let's just do this one last question. Mondo has his hand raised, and um, and after that, we can go ahead and uh, close it out. Uh, so, Mondo, I'm gonna meet you right now. Go ahead and ask your question. Yeah. Uh, I just wanted to have Mr. Rodriguez to uh, put that info on on the VA uh, uh, site where you can go in regarding uh, remodel the bathroom and all that. Oh, you're talking about the programs that help you remodel. You want him to put it in the chat? Yes, please. Yeah, uh, maybe Kurt. If you have, do you or do you have quick access to those programs? The H I S S. Um, it's the VA. I'll look it up. Um, the H S. Let me check. Let me uh, stand by. And also, just uh, just to let you guys know, uh, for those of you who are still with us, the, the, this webinar will be recorded and it will be posted on our website along with the PDF of the PowerPoint. So if there is information that you um, want to get, go back and, and get or something that you missed, um, you know, it's usually up within two to three business days. So sometime by next week, we should have this posted along with the PDF of the PowerPoint. And while... Kurt is getting that information. Um, I'm gonna go ahead and move on to the next slide. This next slide is our upcoming webinars uh, for January and February. If you notice, we do have one later on tonight um, at UC Riverside. Um, you don't have to be a student to attend the ones that are at the colleges. You just have to go to our registration page and, and register. Um, any, any veteran can attend, um, but keep checking out to see uh, which ones are gonna be upcoming. Um, and keep checking out our website to see which ones we've posted. And with that being said, um, this is our contact information. And please, uh, if you have any questions for, for us or if you just need help getting directed to um, the right uh, organization or the right contact, um, give us a call. Uh, we'll be able to direct you to wherever you need to go. Uh, one of either me or Kurt or one of the links will answer this phone call. Um, you know, that's the end of the webinar. Um, while Kurt gets that information in the chat, you guys are all free to go. Uh, thank you for attending today. Uh, thank you for your time and uh, hope to see you guys again next time. And I'm still looking for that information. I can't find the uh housing uh, assistance unless Anthony's still on. If he knows, has a link to it, I'm not sure if he's still on or not. Uh, I don't see that he is on. Yeah, it looks like he, he jumped off. If 
you uh, if you can't find it, like I said, the uh, this will be posted too. Um, so the information will be up on our website uh, by next week. Um, for those of you who do want to get that information about those programs that Anthony was talking about. Okay, that's that's it. All right, everybody. Thanks for your time. I'm going to close out the room.